welcome to teach. Sorry it took us a little bit to get all set up, but we're here and we're starting this new thing called teach. I mean, teaching is not new, but the TV show teach is new and just had a great opportunity to meet Wes Fryer and Anna and Bob, of course. <laughs> Bob Sprite. <laughs> Anna, why don't you say your last name too? I know, so. no one dares pronounce it. <laughs> right, I, you noticed that. <laughs> yeah. But I got the Anna. Leon Guth. Leon Guth. Terrific. And Wes, did I get your last name right? Fryer. You did. It was, right? it was hard. I, I, I practiced it a few times. You did well. And uh, Mr. Sprankle, I uh, also practiced yours a little bit. <laughs> It went well. So, um, Wes, tell me what what you're doing here. In you're you're from you're not from these parts, right? No, I'm an Okie right now. So I'm uh, up here actually on on vacation with my family, but uh, uh, done, done a few fun college visits. And uh, this is I think maybe my fourth trip to New England, and I've had an opportunity to be up here for a few conferences. And uh, this this is this is fun. But of course, we're mixing a little professional. I, I said thanks to Bob. This will allow me to have this as a tax deduction. I think the entire trip, so uh, important time here. So how did how did you hook up, you and Bob? Gosh, well, I listened uh, to a podcast that a fellow named David Warlick uh, created probably back in 2004, 2005, and was introduced to Bob because he was featured in the New York Times in an article about his Room 208 podcast and the great work he did with third and fourth graders. So, you know, I was just an observer from afar, but uh, became a follower of Bob's and, you know, I, I don't know, groupie, is that, we didn't have seedlings, you know, <laughs> fanboys back then, but seriously was just really amazed and enthralled and excited with the ways he was using media with students and the ways that students were viewing themselves as creators and publishers. Um, I'm really into citizen journalism and, and wanting kids to become makers and creators. So Bob was just a, a, an early adopter of that. And, um, you know, th there's a, a string of connections since then, but, you know, we've become friends and had a chance to, to get together multiple times since then. So. Cool. What was it about uh, Room 208 that picked your interest? Well, the traditional school classroom isn't really a producer of knowledge and content. And so this was, you know, in the early days of the internet and, and, and publishing, I mean, hey, it was before YouTube. Remember that? Before 2006? When it was hard to put video on the web and nobody was doing stuff live hardly. The whole philosophy w that Bob took towards Room 208, uh, you know, that, that went beyond technology. The technology was the amplifier, but it was about empowering kids to be writers, to share their voice, to find spaces to write where they were passionate, you know, whether that was the corner about the, uh, the animal at the, sh at the local shelter that was going to be adopted or, you know, covering some event that was happening at school. I just, I was a fourth grade teacher uh, when I was in the elementary classroom and uh, just loved that whole approach because he really made... I think class, uh, it's kind of like a news journalism room. I, I'm not a journalist by trade, but the kids, I think, had a different um, approach towards learning and a different perspective, and, and I, I was engaged by that and wanted to learn more about that and then be able to bring that to other teachers, to my own students as well. And, and so it's, it's far more than technology. It's not just podcasting. It was a vision of, you know, how students could approach learning in a different way and approach learning... Um, you know, as, as teachers and co-creators and co-learners. It wasn't just, I'm here to sit and listen to you talk. Yeah. I'm coming here to do my work, and my work involves research, and it involves using technology, but it involves communication, it involves creating, and being a part of a learning ecosystem mm -hmm. that I would love if we could have in more, more classrooms. But of course, what that requires are passionate teachers that have that kind of a vision, administration, they're supportive of it, a lot of different pieces. But uh, one of the funny things that, uh, that we always tell, uh, and I, I didn't tell Wes this for years, but um, Cheryl Oaks, my cohort, you know, this was 2005 when we were still anonymous on the web. In other words, we were going by uh, our avatar names. I was Beasto, you know, mostly. And, uh, you know, known to hide and protect and keep it all hidden. 
And now I really encourage every teacher to own their own domain name with their with their own name. Anna just bought one the other day with her name. She bought two, right? <laughs> was that you or am I right? No, oh, Tanya no, did. That was Ta Tanya. Tanya did. But I have my own domain name. I had for you a long did. time. Okay, yeah. yeah. And uh, so you know, initially I get this email from this gentleman um, uh, from Texas at that time, and uh, you know, you're doing podcasting, and, and I'm running a course on uh, podcasting. Would you like to join our Moodle? And I and I was kind of like. Who is this guy? You know, because that's how we were in that time. You know, you had to keep everything very secret on the web. Well, it sure has opened up. And um, so uh, we, you know, I don't think I worked with Wes at that time, but we did later. And, um, you know, face to face on video. And, you know, I would count him as one of my closest friends at this point. And we finally met probably in 2008. And, uh, you know, the gifts that, that, the web has given us. I mean, the minute we met, he brought his daughter with him, who met my daughter, same age bracket, and they just hit on off like sisters from, uh, you know, from way back, and have been friends since. And uh, it's just amazing when you open up and you and you really put yourself out there in a transparent way, which is what I wanted to do with the room to teaching was for the parents first and then the whole world to be able to look in and see the important work that the students were doing. Um, so, and then, and then from there, um, Anna and I just met at conferences and boom, you, I mean, things just, there's no, there's no slow introduction anymore. Would you agree? I mean, no, we saw each other a couple times yeah. and, and uh, I moved here and now we're just off and working together again. Yeah. What, are you, what are your thoughts about that? No, I mean, uh, it's like you already know each other. Cause I fo I, I'm like, Wes, I follow your work for so many years. You were like my hero. <laughs> 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 for what you were doing. And I just like the, the whole teaching philosophy that comes with it too, how you approach with the kids. Yeah. And where are you? Where where are you working? Did you say? I'm working in Kittery. Yeah. Uh, at an elementary school, a K through three school. Mm -hmm. And I'm their technology integrator. I'm also their IT person for the school. I'm wearing two hats. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little bit split personality. Big hats. And, and that, that split personality. Um, mm -hmm. You know what are so what's 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 happening in the classroom and what's happening on the IT side and how do you integrate those two? Uh, it doesn't. It's. I don't think those two roles work very well together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I could be two people, to, so I could uh, wear them separately. But I'm doing the best I can. Uh, you, a lot of times, the IT parts take presence because if things don't work for the teacher, like they can't do anything. So you have yeah. to get that to do. But like, I love working with the kids. I love seeing the excitement. Um, I love getting them excited about using technology and also about being safe using technology. Mm -hmm. Not like I'm all for like being open and teach them good habits like i'm i hate when schools shut down uh, their search engines and shuts out websites and stuff like that because that's not reality when they come home when they come home they have an open highway when they're at the library they have an open highway and if they're not taught explicitly like good internet habit and good computer habits they, they're gonna get in trouble yeah and, and you think just because they're young that they don't go out and do stuff they do you know i have I have a son, he's going into fourth grade now, and he's come home with stories. He's home at a friend's house, and, oh, we, we wanted to go to this game site, and we got to a site, we typed in the wrong search thing in Google, and we got to a site that said 18 plus, and there was these ladies with bare breasts, and but we didn't click on it. And I'm like, good, you know, we can have a discussion about <laughs> yeah, why you shouldn't no click on it, right. you know? And I don't mind that. Yeah. And he already encountered last year, like, uh, a, a classroom, uh, a friend in his classroom asked him to impersonate his brother and post bad stuff on the brother's profile. So mm, that it, mm. And you, you think third grade that they wouldn't mm -hmm. do those things, but they do. So it opened up, at least with my son, it opened up the door to have good discussions about why you don't do those things. Mm -hmm. It's actually cyberbullying if you take it to the extreme. Mm -hmm. And also, like, don't ever share your password. Really, don't, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Be safe. Mm hmm. Wes, how about you in terms of uh, sort of the, the from the technology side to the classroom side? Even though there's no, you know, there's no firm boundaries there, but uh, where do you where where are you coming from? Well, I'm getting to work as an instructional coach. I'm called an innovative instructional coach for Common Core in Oklahoma. We're a Common Core state, but 
my real focus is working with classroom teachers who want to use technology to help their students publish for an authentic audience and to amplify their work and to use technology in ways that engage kids. Um, and it really we're in the stone age of this. I was talking to Cheryl Oaks last night about blogging and we were talk I was asking about, you know, <laughs> what different tools people are using. A lot of these things have really not taken off and we could talk about why that is. But it really helping teachers for the first time have an interactive classroom blog where students can post their work and parents can post comments and students can comment for each other. We've been using Kid Blog the last year as a site. I mean, Bob was doing this kind of stuff back in 2005. Again, this was in the real early days, but a vision of learning and, and a vision of students having a very participatory, interactive, empowered role and voice um, maybe isn't a traditional way of looking at the classroom and mm -hmm. looking at learning. And so it's very exciting for me to be able to work with teachers um, who are enthused and on board and I'm in a school district, Yukon Public Schools, which is west of Oklahoma City, that has uh, wonderful support and vision for this as well. Um, I mean, to give you an idea, we just rolled out laptops to all of our teachers, high school teachers that had them, but not, not elementary, middle school. Um, we're not one to one. We don't have a seventh and eighth grade, you know, one to one in the state. I mean, up here in Maine, there's a, there have been doing things for a long time with one to one, but. Um, I guess I what I would love to do as a I, I've really gotten this aha about a coach. We never think of sports like oh you've done tennis before you're good mm -hmm. you know just go out there on your own you'll be fine. We know that you need a coach whether you're mm -hmm. at the pro level or you know you're just beginning. And I think with with teaching and learning it's the same. Mm -hmm. All of us get better with coaching. All of us get better with an opportunity to reflect on what we've done and share it with peers. And so I'm loving this coaching role. Yeah. And and I just think that we. We need to do a lot more of it. We have some of it with literacy coaches and literacy first and different initiatives, mm -hmm. but all of us all of us get better with good coaching. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know that I'm always learning as a coach, and uh, it's it's fun. It's yeah. fun every day to get to uh, ultimately help kids create media because yeah. we talk about smart boards and a lot of stuff or interactive whiteboards. A lot of technology can can really reinforce what we traditionally do with a teacher directed model. You know, helping kids create media, share their voice, share their work, get feedback, participate in in a world of interactive publishing that's moderated and, and you know, adult supervised. I'm very passionate about that. And it's yeah. kind of amazing that we're still at, almost at the starting block with, with a lot of it. Um, but that's okay. That's where we are and that's yeah. where Bill, we're Bill, could I uh Sure. Can I interrupt for a second? You I mean, if, if we're able to, uh, Tanya Avrith from uh, Montreal is ready to join us if we're ready to bring her in on Skype. Great. Which just shows once Oh, on again, Skype? Uh, Skype, are you, are you able to do that? I can Skype? do Skype. Okay. It'll okay. take a moment. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Where's Bob? From Montreal. There you go. You guys Hi. know what we've been talking about? I am so excited to be here. Oh my god. I meet. We met at the Google Teacher Academy. Woo! <laughs> Team Swan. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've been um, cohorts since then and helping each other out. Ah, oh. Bob's like my mentor now. <laughs> and right back at you to everybody. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've been working through uh, the project together, and uh, it's really a phone call away. It's FaceTime. It's, it's free. Um, she, she called me the other day. I was talking to Wes. I said, oh, i got to hang out. I'm in bed, you know, just lounging. 30 seconds, convince these teachers to, why blogging is important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And they are. They're starting to blog. That's all it takes, folks. That's right. <laughs> here, I have a colleague here. Come say hi. We're Hello, on. how are you? Howdy. Hello. Hello. This is, this is Mark Tremblay. He actually does speak French. Say something. Je ne sais pas quoi dire en français, mais oui. C'est ça, je suis français, je parle français. Vous parlez français aussi? Je parle un peu français. Ah, c'est super. Votre accent est super bel. Oui. Sorry? I'm saying it's it's like... Beautiful accent. Yeah, yes. The accent was nice. Exactly. Tony, you don't speak French?
We should put on four C or C. Okay. It's cool. Yeah, this is what. Okay, so where are you guys? We are in um, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, so we're oh three miles from the ocean and uh, about oh a hundred and fifty yards from Maine, uh, right where the ocean in Maine and New Hampshire meet. Beautiful. Nice. We're not so far from you. Three hours? Is that what you said? I yes. think it's four. No, five. Five. Five? Yes, yeah. but longer. That's an yeah. inside joke. Yeah. With yeah. It's like you can stay by my house on your way home, and I'm like, it's only like a five-hour drive. <laughs> That's right. Okay, Mark's on his way out. Thank you so okay. much. You're so good to see you. He's water. so sweet. He brought me water because he thinks that I'm going to be dehydrated. Yeah, she has a headache already. So. You will. So let me show us how easy it is to work uh, like that. We pulled you in in a second, just like you did the other day, and. Uh, you know, if, I, if people are free, um, this can happen. And I, I wrote a blog article uh, a little bit ago where there's a lot of people with free time. And as teachers, we could be pulling them into our classrooms via Skype in a center, having students read to them or play math games or whatnot. My old dad could do that if he had a computer, uh, the teacher's parent or uh, grandparents of the children. Something to think about. I mean, Tanya... Well had a few minutes yeah. free and was able to come right in. Yeah, well, you know, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Skype has on their website a separate Skype in Education website mm -hmm. where you can sign in as a teacher and you can set up and uh, propose projects that you're doing oh, and people can join you from all over the world. And we did that in my school and we found, uh, we found a, a park ranger from Yellowstone. And even though our kids didn't do anything about Yellowstone, I still set it up for the second graders because they were studying Maine. So I figured, how cool you can do a compare and contrast about Yellowstone and Maine, about what animals are in Maine versus what's in Yellowstone. And we brought in the park ranger, and it was beautiful. She did an amazing job uh, to talk to the kids, and they loved it. And they got like first hand talking to someone about what's going on in Yellowstone. And they were all pu pumped. Wow. I, I think they all want to be park rangers now. I will go as bold as saying that there should be. Uh, a Skype computer running in every classroom. You could have the oldest, I mean, we have old computers from MLTI, Main Learning Technology Initiative, that are, you know, t 10 years old and, and creaking by. But if you can run a, a video through it, then that's a center for, for classrooms, and it's really an untapped um, audience out there. Of course, you know, you want to vet the person and make sure that they're, you know, somebody can vouch for them and they're safe and all, but we, you know, we can t so totally like just like we just did right now, Tanya could be reading a book to students, or we could be reading to her. It took that little to set up. And also, I want to add as professional development. Mm -hmm. For example, Bob, I invited Bob. Um, I gave a session two days ago to a group of teachers uh, on like um, talking about my experience coming back from the Google Teacher Academy. And beforehand, what I did is I sent out um, a request and invitation for a Google Hangout for 10 minutes um, just to demonstrate my PLN to the teachers that were in the in, in my session. And so what happened was at 1.40, I, I didn't tell them that I was going to do this, but I pulled up my Google Plus and I went on a Hangout and 10 people, literally, from all over the like country, like Hawaii, Ohio, Los Angeles, New York, New Jersey. I mean, we were really well represented because we shared the same passion and interest and they had a few moments to talk about how we can collaborate and uh, learn from each other and um, how we can we got each other's backs like we really do did you just uh, admit that uh, Canada is part of the United States yeah <laughs> we, as, I, when I say we I mean like educators passionate yeah. educators who like this is our life like we love this this is what we live for um, you know, we got to take a we got to take a quick break because we set this up from one to two so we're just gonna shut down the uh, the, the broadcast aspect of it, but we can keep the conversation going. So I'm just going to fade to black just briefly here. So